Isang mapagpalang araw na naman sa ating lahat, mga kapatid ko kay Kristo sa Aika at sa ating pagpatuloy, sa ating panambahan, sa ating Diyos na buhay, atin siyang pinapupurihan sa kanyang kat- katapatan sa atin, sa kanyang pagpapalang, walang humpay, at sa pagbibigay niya ng proteksyon para sa ating lahat. In the midst of our present crisis, His grace never runs out, supplying us with everything that we need for life and godliness. Tayo ay sumusunod pa rin sa ating sermon series na ating pinamagatang Sermon on the Mount. And today we are on the seventh lesson in the Beatitudes and we will talk about the blessedness of being a peacemaker. Blessed are the peacemakers. Now, the subject of peace can be considered a very major theme throughout the Bible. Ito po ay makikita natin throughout the scripture. No? From the beginning in Genesis, from our opening of the book of Genesis to its closing in Revelation, you know, there are hundreds of references to peace in the scripture. God actually originally created man and woman and put them in a garden, and it was a garden of peace. When sin entered the world, we get the picture of peace being taken out from that scenario, peace that was interrupted. There were trouble, sicknesses, curse, death. They are manifestation of peace that is lost. So that God's purpose of sending His Son to earth was actually to restore peace. Kaya nga ang isa sa mga pangalan ni Jesus sa Isaiah is Prince of Peace. Prinsipe na ang kapayapaan. And ito yung overarching feature o marka ni Jesus sa apat na gospel writings from Matthew to John. His mere presence already brings peace to those who are seeking the Lord. Even the storms, even the waves can recognize Him being the Prince of Peace. When Jesus was preaching the Sermon on the Mount, this was a very relevant topic to the context of the Jewish people. Because during this time, the Jews maintained bitterness and hatred for the surrounding Gentile nations. Alam natin na sa kanilang history, sila ay sinakop, inupress, at tinanggalan ng kanilang identity as a nation. So that the Jews in Jesus' time waited for the Messiah to conquer their enemies and set them free from this oppression. They were waiting for that peace na matagal na nilang hinintay. Peace is every nation's goal and dream. We long for the world peace. Nations unite for this purpose. They are addressing crimes, spending billions of money in search for solutions. Or is it development? Or is it in the area of health? In the area of economy? What really brings peace to a nation? Will it be military strength? Can they usher in peace with all these things? Which one promotes better peace? Ito yung mga katanungan na pilit sinasagot ng mga bansa. But in all of this, we have this biggest problem of all. And that is why peace is never achieved. That man is at war with God. The main reason why there is no peace in the world and that we continue to experience major conflict going on can be summarized simply in this reality. Nakipagyera ang tao laban sa Diyos. And that's the biggest problem. Since the fall of man, all indications of our enmity with God were clear. And they are all translated to all levels of our human affairs. Be it in the government, in the community, in the homes, in the family, in your own very life. And therefore, any attempt to find peace in this world will only fail. There's really no peace in the heart of man. Remember Jacob? His deceitful scheming one day caught him up, caught up with him. Kahit na lumago siya, umaman, nag-expand ang kanyang kayamanan, but he had no peace. Wala siyang katahimikan dahil kanyang niloko ang kanyang kapatid na si Esau. And he had to wrestle with God 
in order to find peace. Jacob represents all humanity na naghahanap ng kapayapaan at hanggat hindi nila nahanap ang punot dulo nito, walang katahimikan sa kanilang mga puso. Peace cannot be manufactured. And there is this annual Nobel Peace Prize no, that started in 1901. This is an organization that recognizes individuals who are known in the promotion of peace. It's been a century ago, and did it really find the solution to the world peace today? Sa panahon ng mga Romano, they also promoted the Pax Romana, or in Latin, for Roman peace. To them, this means sustained imperialism, order, prosperity, stability, military power, empire expansion, They are known to keep order by imposing one of the most cruel forms of punishment, the crucifixion. Sinong hindi matakot dito? But did that really serve the purpose of keeping peace and order? The more the people are troubled. Many were the attempts of revolt and growing hostility against their subjects. That is why when Jesus was teaching not to make war with others, but instead cultivate the character of a peacemaker, this was something that is a hard-to-swallow kind of teaching and irrelevant to them. Their ultimate plan was really to raise up a king and revolt against the Romans. At nakita nila ito sa kakayahan ni Jesus. That is why in John 6.15, Jesus knew, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, he withdrew again to a mountain by himself. Their kind of peace is physical and political freedom. But this is not the agenda in the kingdom of Jesus. In fact, masasyak sila sa sasabihin ni Jesus in Matthew 10.35. They're not supposed that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace but a sword. Jesus is not a typical kind of prince of peace. Bago niya nilalagay sa ayos, ino overhaul niya ang lahat. Dinidismantle at nilalagay sa ayos. Dahil ang nais ni Jesus is i-expose ang tunay na ugat ng ating kaguluhan, which is our enmity with God. Kaaway tayo ng Diyos. Hindi mga Romano against the Jews. Hindi tao, hindi sakit, o ano pa mang mga sakuna ang dahilan kung bakit magulo ang buhay kundi dahil kaaway tayo ng Diyos. His word is His sword. It divides, it pierces through soul and spirit. Matthew 10.35-36 For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemy, enemies will be the members of his own household. At ang mas masaklap na katotohanan is that not everyone will respond to the gospel. They will continue to resist, rebel against God, to war against God. And those whose hearts that are full of prejudice, of hate, and pride, they will resist Jesus' offer of peace. And then many will reject it. The message will divide people, will divide families, and divide nations. But for those who surrender to the Lordship of Jesus, those who allow the piercing of His word or sword, they will find peace. And this is our principle. A peacemaker is one who is reconciled with God. First of all, peacemakers are people who have been made right with God, whose sins have been dealt with in Christ. Only then, can a genuine peace be experienced. Dalawa lang ang hantungan nating lahat, kaaway ka o kaibigan ng Diyos. A soul that is not right with God will always be restless. That's why Paul also called the gospel as the gospel of peace. And with your feet, fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Ibanghelyo ng kapayapaan.
dahil ang katangian ng isang tao na tinanggap niya at isinabuhay ang Ebanghelyo ni Jesus ay isang tao mapayapa. They are the ones who found an end to their struggle. That is why in our Christian lingo we say, Isoko mo na sa ang iyong buhay kay Kristo. Dahil habang wala ka sa kalooban ng Diyos, ikaw ay nakipagbuno sa Kanya at, nakipag, at nakakapagod yun. Jesus made this invitation in Matthew 11, Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Coming to Him is actually an act of surrendering to God. And it is God's work to draw us, or it is Jesus' work to draw us closer to God by dying on the cross. The symbol of the cross is a powerful reminder that in Jesus, God and man were brought together. His death stopped the war between God and man. At siya ay naipit sa gitna. Siya ay nasakripisyo sa gyerang ito. Ang kanyang kamatayan ang siyang tumigil o tumapos sa away, sa alitan, sa pagitan ng Diyos at ng tao. Therefore, if you have not surrendered your life to Jesus yet, you are still an enemy of God. You are still under the wrath of God and you will never find peace. Because only the Lord Jesus Christ can save you from the wrath of Jesus Christ, of God. Romans 5, 9, Since we have now been justified by His blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through Him? And this is the real peace that the world cannot give. By satisfying the demand of justice of God instead of wrath, man is now recipient of God's mercy. You are now subject to His favor and blessing. And in fact, hahabulin ka niya para i-bless. Ganun ka prosigido ang Diyos para sa mga anak niya. Dahil lahat ng tumanggap kay Kristo ay magiging anak ng Diyos. John 1.12 Yet to all who did receive Him, to those who believe in His name, He gave the right to become children of God. Naalala niyo pa ba yung toddler niyong anak na hinahabol-habol niyo pa para subuan ng pagkain? Habang siya ay naglalaro, nag-i-enjoy, takbo lang ng takbo, ayaw mo, ayaw mo magutom siya. You'd like to feed him or her. Ganun ang ama sa anak. And this is a picture of what it means to become a child of God. We are recipient of His blessings, of His favor, and this is peace. Many people would define it as absence of war or absence of chaos. That is peace. Now this is what the Romans tried to maintain by having their Pax Romana and what we desire in our homes. We need to maintain that power. We need to maintain control. We need to maintain things that we know can really suffice to give us peace in the house. We want absence of chaos. We want order, the absence of conflict. But the scripture has another different meaning of peace, which is something like this. That peace is not the absence of anything, but the presence of something. The Hebrew term for peace is shalom, or harmony, or wholeness, completeness, prosperity, welfare, or tranquility, name it. And shalom is not achieved by taking out something, but instead in the sense of being complete or whole. This is what Jesus meant when he said in John 14, 27, Peace, I live with you. My peace, I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Now do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Your being a child of God is sufficient. The only thing you need to secure you of peace. The outside world cannot touch you. The world cannot give you that sense of security. So nothing should trouble you. If you are a child of God, you are complete as far as need is concerned. You think you lack this, you think you lack that, there's a problem with this, there's a problem with that. No, the Bible tells us in Second Peter 1, 3, God's divine power has given us everything we need for life and for godliness. And if you know that, 
you will have peace. You know, if you observe how Jesus displayed this kind of peace and assurance as the Son of God, in the midst of the storm, he was able to sleep soundly. No external forces can affect him. This is shalom. This is wholeness. This is completeness. And para kay Apostle Paul, although he was advised not to go to Jerusalem because of a threat, you know, it really didn't matter to him. Persecution, insult, and all kinds of threats were nothing to him. At nung pumunta na siya sa Jerusalem, kinulong siya doon, but he was even able to write a letter or letters that were overflowing with message of peace. In Philippians 4, 7, And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You know, this week I discovered I had a lump in my neck and I was tempted to worry. But I had to choose to rely on the peace of God to help transcends what my human mind understand or did not understand or even fabricate. It is really tempting to think about hospitalization, even death, you think about it. And God's peace is abundant, praise the Lord, when you depend upon Him. It just defies human understanding. Di mo maintindihan. It is mysterious and it guarded our hearts and our minds. The peace that Jesus gives is an active and creative force. It is not passive. It produces goodness even in the midst of wickedness. You know, when Stephen was stoned to death, he offered forgiveness as he imitated Jesus Christ, his master. It is not the absence of conflict. It is the presence of aggressive goodness that can only be produced when you have peace. And this is what makes one a peacemaker themselves. Only by experiencing the true peace of God can one become a peacemaker himself. In essence, it is like a package deal. Tumanggap ka ng kapayapaan upang ikaw ay makapagbigay nito sa iba. You receive peace so you can give peace. You are being reconciled in order to reconcile others to Christ. In 2 Corinthians 5.17-18, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone, the new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. In other words, when you become a child of God, you are self-replicating by bringing others to Christ so they can become children of God as well. And this is the highest form of peacemaking. Think of for one moment, if all the people in the world are children of God, reconciled himself and to do the ministry of reconciliation to others, will still there be a need for law enforcers? Will there be, be need for police or traffic enforcers? You don't need union of the nations for them to achieve peace. That is indeed a picture of the kingdom of God. Isn't it exciting to see what difference when Christ rules in all the peoples of the world? Peacemakers are world changers. Wag po nating baliwalain ang katotohanan ito dahil kapatid, ikaw po ito. And this is our promise that you will reign in the kingdom of God. Because peacemakers are called children of God. They will reign together with the Son, Jesus Christ. And together, they will be seated with Him. Ephesians 2, 6, And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. In the Bible, being seated with Christ means you are in the position where you share with that honor and divine power that only belongs to Jesus Christ. In other words, a child of God leads and reigns with Christ. In the Old Testament, Christ was given this name in Isaiah 9, 7, and His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, 
everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of His government and of peace, there shall be no end. Ang kanyang kaharian ay walang katapusang paglaki at paglago at paglawa. And in that vast and everlasting kingdom of God, the peacemakers will not just be an ordinary and simple inhabitants. They will be people with position. They will be people with authority, with office, with function. And that post or office starts today. In the Ministry of Reconciliation, they have office because they will reign in that kingdom. The peacemaking is the Ministry of Reconciliation. We are the ambassador of Christ. We break down walls of division between God and man. Kaya nga dito pa lang sa atin, sa lupa pa lang, sa ating mga sarili, sa ating mga kapatid, maipakita na natin ang kahulugan nito. In Romans 12:18, if it is possible as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. You know the cross of Jesus has two dimensions of reconciliation. The vertical reconciliation that is between man and God and the horizontal is between man to man. In a more practical sense, it is to live tolerant with other people. It is to live in friendship, in reconciliation with other people. At hindi po madali mag-adjust para sa ibang tao. There are rights and privileges you sometimes need to give up. And sometimes, kahit na pure ang intention mo, sometimes when we hurt other feelings, then you go, you go back to them and ask for forgiveness. There has to be a master, mastering of that art of sensitivity. And it is part of the broad ministry of peacemaking. When you fail, we quickly go back to that person and confess that you are wrong. Walang lugar sa ministering ito ang madaling mapikon, ang madaling magsawa, at madaling sumuko. Because desiring this calling is aligning your image to the image of Christ until you become mature, attaining the full measure of Christ. Because he himself gave up all his privileges and rights. Remember this verse in Philippians 2. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. In the homes, with families, we choose to love, we choose to serve, and rightly relate with our family members. Still, that is peacemaking. And most often, the home is the most difficult place to show peacemaking dahil hindi ka pwedeng magkunwari sa bahay, mahuhuli ka. In our workplace or with our friends or in the ministries, you know, we are peacemakers when we work out our own relationship with them according to the will of God. When we help and guide people resolve their own relational conflicts and most importantly, when we help others get in right relationship with God. Aren't these the very work of God? Yet He entrusted the peacemakers, for they are His own children. And God can trust His peacemakers. As you decide to respond to God's truth today, here is three practical things you may want to apply for yourself this week. Number one, build a bridge. Peacemaking is really a work of reaching out and building relationships with a, with a godly purpose. Think of someone who had hurt you before or whom you have hurt before, especially if they're not Christians, then start connecting with them sa social media man or sa anong kaparaanan or other means. Number two, don't be defensive. If all issues are being brought back, peacemakers are ready to accept responsibility for what they have done. Always be ready to say sorry and never be self-protective. Do not be defensive. And last, center on Christ. Remember, the end goal of every peacemaking is Christ. When you have won an end Christian friend to Christ, that is the most 
fulfilling part. And you will see that this small act of peacemaking, God will bless and entrust you with more. For who is faithful with you will be entrusted with more. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and Amen.